Uh, there, you may start. Have a good session. Thanks. So welcome everybody to this session on tools for cryptanalysis. We are going to have six talks today. Uh, the first one is by Zhou Chuning, Zhang Wantao, Ding Tianyou, Xiang Suju. And the talk is going to be about uh, improving the MILP-based security evaluation algorithm against differential and linear cryptanalysis using a divide and conquer approach. And the talk is given by Chu Ning. Okay, can you see my shared screen? Yes. Okay, thanks for your introduction. Hello everyone, I'm Chen Ning Zhou. The title of our talk is Improving the MILP-based security evaluation algorithm against differential or linear cryptanalysis using a divide and conquer approach. Our topic is about differential and linear cryptanalysis. They are two of the most effective and powerful tests to analyze metric key primitives. Being able to resist the two attacks is an important criterion for designing symmetric key primitives. To evaluate the security of a cipher against differential or linear cryptanalysis, there are usually two approaches. One is to calculate the minimum number of active X boxes and the other is to search for the best differential or linear characteristics. In recent years, a method based on MILP is proposed for solving the two problems. In this method, each, pro each problem is transformed into an MILP model. The model consists of an objective function and linear constraints. For the model built for an Aron cipher, its physical region is the site of all valid around characteristics. And by solving this model, the optimal around characteristic is returned. However, the efficiency of solving existing MILP models is not enough. The model cannot be solved within a reasonable time when the number of rounds is too large. Our motivation is to make the MILP-based method more efficient so that we can use it to derive better results. In this talk, we propose an improved MILP-based method by using the divide and conquer approach. The algorithm is used to evaluate the security of symmetric key primitives against differential or linear cryptanalysis and is applied to five lightweight block ciphers in this talk. Our search algorithm is proposed based an important observation. For many lightweight block ciphers, the differential or linear characteristics with the highest probability or absolute linear bias are likely to have a low number of active as boxes at a certain round. For the search for an iron cipher, the algorithm is as follows. Firstly, we divide the whole search space, namely the set of all possible around characteristics into smaller subsets. Then we separately search each subset. Searching a subset is equivalent to solving an MILP model with a reduced physical region. Thus, it seems to be easier than searching the whole site. And in this step, three technicals are used to further improve efficiency. Finally, the optimal characteristic within the whole site is given by combining the results returned from all the subsets. As applications, we apply our search algorithm to three SPN ciphers and two physical ciphers. For each of the five ciphers, we obtain the results of the minimum number of differentially and linearly active as boxes and best differential and li linear characteristics. This table summarizes the comparison of the results on best differential and linear characteristics between two previous work and ours. From the table, we see that our search algorithm has an advantage over the other two methods when the number of rounds is large. And for each cipher, we cover more rounds with less time. 
To conclude, we focus on improving the efficiency of the MILP-based security evaluation algorithm against differential and linear craft analysis and pro propose a new search algorithm by using the divide and conquer approach. In this talk, we apply the algorithm to file lightweight block ciphers and get better results. Also, the algorithm is applicable to other symmetric key parameters. That's all. Thanks for your attention. Thanks, Jimmy. Um, the second talk is given by, or is uh, on a paper by Christina Bura and Daniel Koja on efficient MILP modelings for S-boxes and linear layers of SPN ciphers. And the talk is given by Daniel. Yeah. Hello, can you hear me well? Is it, do you see the slides? No? Yes, that works. Is it okay? Yeah, okay. Uh, so, hi, my name is uh, Daniel Koja, and thank you for the introduction. Uh, and uh, yeah, so uh, thank you, Chenning, for uh, introducing the field uh, already. Uh, so, we need tools for computing many properties of the primitives we study. And uh, training the field is to use SAT constraint programming or MILP solvers. And uh, what if we want to benefit from the solvers, we still have to to do the modeling between our cryptanalysis problem and the SAT CP or MIP problem. And uh, this is, so this is the modeling process. And the thing is with the modeling process that uh, given a, a cryptanalysis problem, there can be different ways of modeling the same. Uh, so this problem and depending on the model, the solver can have very different behaviors in terms of running times. So the problem we studied is how to get good MILP, MILP modelings for the problem of computing differential trays through SPN constructions that allow the solvers to perform as fast as possible. So MILP problems are the problem of optimizing an objective function, which is an all linear function and uh, all linear constraints. And uh, what makes it hard is that we can restrict some variables to take integer values and even restrict them to take only binary values, which is what we do in crypto. Uh, what makes a solver run fast on uh, such a problem is that the, the model is, uh, in the MIP problem is rather small, both in terms of variables and in terms of constraints. So we want to, so we decided in our study to not introduce variables that we did not need and uh, to focus on how to have not too many constraints uh, with the, those few variables. So for so and we did it we did it for bitwise modelings and uh, and for SPN constructions obviously. So for S boxes, uh, we provide nice ways of modeling Boolean functions. So if you have a Boolean con if in your MIP modeling you want to add a Boolean constraint we have techniques to get them, to transform them into MILP constraints. And this allows us uh, to model 4-bit uh, or 8-bit DDTs. So, and our techniques, so they, they, they existed previously, so there previously existed some techniques for that, but uh, our techniques uh, are quite better in the sense that, for example, for the AES DDT, uh, we can have uh, the smallest number of inequalities compared to the start of the art uh, ones. So this is the number of inequalities you see. Okay. So for linear layers, uh, we start with bad news as uh, we proved that uh, for a multiple XOR constraint, the number of inequalities needed is exponential. So if you have a typical mixed columns constraint with a matrix M, uh, what we'll do is that uh, we'll change this uh, typical mixed columns constraints into another constraint, an equivalent constraint, uh, which tries to decrease the, the size of the multiple XOR constraints. So, of course, this cannot work with the MDS or NEMDS uh, matrices like the one of Midori. Uh, but this can give improvement. This can give improvements of, for, for example, for Skinny or the Saturna uh, linear layers. For the AES, we had to push the idea a bit further, but that worked uh, to, to decrease the number of inequalities needed as well. 
So we showcased our techniques by proving, by partially proving the resistance against impossible differentials for 13 rounds of skinny and five rounds of AES. Basically, we exhaustively compute uh, differential trays uh, for such uh, input-output pairs where only one byte is, uh, is active. And uh, so this uh, exhaustive uh, computation is uh, accelerated thanks to Sasaki and Todo's techniques presented at Eurocrypt 2017. So to conclude, uh, if you have to write a milk model uh, in the next few months, or <laughs> if you want to get started, uh, I think uh, our work can provide some uh, useful techniques uh, that can help you do so. So thank you for your attention. Thanks, Daniel. So our next paper is by uh, Sunling, David Giro, Wang Wei, and Wang Meijing on the usage of deterministic related key truncated differentials and multidimensional linear approximations for SPN ciphers. And the talk is given by Sunling. Uh, hello, can you hear me? Yes. Uh, can you see my screen? Yes, everything's working perfect. Oh, okay. Thanks for the introduction. Um, hello, everyone. The name of the paper is on the usage of deterministic related k truncated differentials and multidimensional linear approximations for the SPN ciphers. Uh, in the last decade, the automatic tool for crypt analysis obtained rapid development but we find that few works consider the search of deterministic truncated differential or multidimensional linear approximation. So constructing an automatic tool that realizes the search of deterministic TD or MDLA is the initial motivation of this, of this paper. Uh, on the other side, we also find that all existing methods for this problem implement the search under fixed input differences or masks. However, the optimality of the dis distinguisher should be confirmed where an exhaustive search over all possible input differences or masks. And this cannot be afforded when the internal state of the primitive has a considerable number of words. So whether we can find a way to solve or partially solve this problem becomes the second motivation. Uh, with this in mind, the contribution of this work can be divided into three parts. Firstly, we propose an automatic tool for the search of deterministic RKTD and MDLA. And the second contribution is that we improve the related K differential linear attack on AES 192. And the third contribution is that we develop a way to apply the automatic tool to construct related K impossible differential with TD and the multidimensional zero correlation linear approximation with MDLA. And this technique is also impl implemented with several ciphers and the provable security bonds of Skinny and Midori 64 against the impossible differential distinguishing attack are uh, generalized. Uh, the underlying mathematical problem we use is constraint satisfaction problem. Just like all, all works about the automatic search, they should convert the distinguisher searching problem into a CST and uh, utilize some openly available solver to solve this problem. Uh, we do not think the CST is a unique method to accomplish our search. But the reason we employ CSP lessening is consciousness and convenience. Uh, the construction of the automatic tool has four steps and the novelty mainly comes from the third step. That is the way to clarify the searching scope of the input patterns. Uh, previously, the usual way is to fix the input pattern as a predetermined value and the format of the input pattern will influence the length of the truncated differential. So an ideal solution for the optimal TD is an exhaustive search over all possible input pattern. But as we mentioned, sometimes this cannot be afforded. 
uh, to overcome this incomplete search, in our new model, we do not fix the format of the input pattern and only claim that the input difference is non-zero. So after adding this constraint into the CSP, in the searching phase, the CP solver will automatically traverse all possible input patterns and the exhaustive search turns into an inherent feature of our model. Uh, and to ensure the existence of an uh, R round TD or MDLA, at most the searching program should be implemented for three RL times. Uh, so as the first application of the tool, we find that the previous five round RKDL distinguisher for AES 192 relies on a four round RKTD with probability one for the first subsepher. So we try to implement the method we introduced to search for better RKTD so that we can construct better RKDL distinguisher. But after the a complete search with the model, we find that the length of the optimal TD cannot be uh, extended due to the well-designed diffusion layer. However, we discover another non-trivial property in the DL distinguisher. Uh, this, this is a previously used distinguishing property and it relies on two bytes of differences. Well, in the new property, we found the on, uh, only uh, we only requires one byte of difference. So we also note that the pairs of this new prop of these two properties are almost the same. Uh, so the complexity of the distinguishing attack with the new property basically remains unchanged. But the complexity of the K recovery attacks drops because less K bytes gets involved in the K recovery phase. So in this way, we realize an improvement for the related K differential linear attack on AES 192. Uh, the second ap application of the automatic tool is to construct an uh, impossible differential and zero correlation linear approximation. The basic version called U star methods follows the missing the middle approach. The distinctions between our tool and the U method lie in firstly, the way to implement the search, and secondly, the set of differential patterns applied to generate contradictions. Uh, we take a smaller set, U star, which is also the reason for the name of our tool, but we prove that, at least regarding SPN ciphers, the U star method has almost the same performance as the U method, and the set, uh, thirdly, the difference also lies in the searching scope of the input and output patterns. So in this sense, we partially handle the long-standing incomplete searching problem in the field of ID and CCLA. Uh, we also propose the optimize the use that method so that we can find this kind of contradiction. Uh, there is a comparison of all tool targeting RKID of SPN ciphers and an outstanding feature of our tool is it supports the exhaustive search. Uh, our source code are openly available and all tests in the paper are implemented with one processor. Uh, since the runtime vary with different settings and we only provide some kind of rough runtime, for the, for the applica uh, applications of Skinny and Midori64, all programs finish in several seconds well, for Minapur P, it takes several minutes to return the results. Uh, the U star and the optimizer U star method are applied to three primitives. We obtain some new distinguishers and generalize the provable security bounds of Skinny and Midori64 against ID or RKID distinguishing attack. So that's all for the presentation. Thank you for your attention. Thanks, Lin. Uh, for the next talk, we um, will hear about finding bit-based division property for ciphers with complex linear layers by Hu Kai, Wang, Mei, uh, Wang Jingju, and Wang Meijing. And the talk is given by Kai. We don't hear you yet, Kai, but we did see your screen. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. That's... Okay. Can you see my screen? 
Yeah, if you just switch back okay. to presentation mode, you're good to go. Okay. Oh, you know the order of the first name and the last name for Chinese. <laughs> yeah, okay. Hello, everyone. My name is Kai, and uh, this is a joint work with Qingju and uh, Mei Qin. Uh, bit based division property is a well known method for uh, finding the integral distinguisher. And uh, for a software operation, if you know the divariant property of the input, uh, we can know the divariant property of the output by the propagation rules. And uh, if you consider more operations, uh, we can find a, a divariant trial. In automatic search, uh, the central problem is to model the propagation rule and we can trace all the divariant trials. And uh, for some basic operations, uh, such like XOR and copy and SBOX, they are still perfect models for propagation rules, but for complex linear layer, such as MDS matrix, random matrix, or nine vertical matrix, uh, there is no perfect model. Uh, there are still uh, there are, uh, two previous attempts on this method. Uh, the first one is S method, which is which was proposed by Lin Sun, etc. And uh, uh, this method is universal but a little imprecise. And uh, the second method is called the ZR method, which is more related to our work. It maps a valid divergent trial to an invertible submetrics uh, like this. If you want to check whether you can propagate to V, you just check whether MVU is an invertible matrix. Uh, ZR method is precise but uh, uh, restricted because uh, it only works for binary matrices. Uh, in this paper, we want to uh, solve this problem. Uh, so if we want to check whether MVU is invertible, we only, want, we only need to check whether this equation has solutions. Uh, if we can model the equation into the, uh, by the automatic search tool, uh, we solve the problem. Uh, however, there are still some challenges. Uh, the first one is we do not know the weight of U and V. So the size of MVU cannot be known in advance, uh, but in automatic search tools, uh, we declare variables uh, with their sizes. So if we do not know the size, we cannot declare the variables. Uh, we use a dynam dynamic method to model the equations. Uh, without loss of generality, we assume that the submetrix is always located under the top left corner like this. Uh, firstly, we introduce a new matrix called M expand. Uh, it keeps the submatrix unchanged uh, in its position and uh, let other elements be zero. And we introduce another matrix called EV and uh, it contains an identity matrix. So the problem is whether we can find uh, inverse, uh, the inverse of MVU in this matrix. The answer is yes. Uh, we can write the equation in a simple way like this. So you can check uh, this whether this equation has a solution that is totally uh, decided by these two equations. Uh, just uh, write it out. And uh, we look at uh, the second one. Uh, if x0, 1 is free variables, then this equation can always be satisfied. So this e whether this equation has the solutions, uh, it's totally equivalent to whether this equation has solutions. And this e equation is just to what we want. So to model this equation, we can model this equation. Uh, and uh, for this equation, the size of the matrices, uh, we, we can know the size of the matrices in this equation. And with two observations, uh, we could write MVU and uh, EV uh, by M M and V and U and E. Uh, so we can write this equation into a compact way uh, like this. Uh, they are totally n squared constraints. Uh, the constraints are all four degree constraints. So it is not suitable for MLP model since MLP uh, is good at linear constraints. Uh, it is most suitable to SMT tools. Uh, in this paper, we use the SM STP tool. And uh, the M expand prime is a support matrix with n squared auxiliary variables. 
Another contribution of our paper is we remove the invertible collision from the ZR method. In their paper, they think they thought the original matrix should be invertible. Uh, since our new model uses the same theory, so our model is also restricted. Surprisingly, we found the collision was only for proving that uh, the Hamming weights of U and V should be equal. And uh, we can prove that uh, the Hamming weight of U and V should be equal in default without uh, any collision. So uh, we improve the method of ZR. <clears throat> uh, the next is the, the next other. Uh, Application. Uh, the first one is we reproduce the 501k dependent integral distinguisher. Uh, uh, the key point of this, di this distinguisher is here uh, y0 and y1 should be always equal. So we prepare a shrink matrix, uh, then apply our uh, new model to this shrink matrix. So uh, we can from uh, x0, x1, x2. Uh, to get y0, y1, y2, y3, and uh, y1 uh, is always equal to y1, uh, y0 is always equal to y1, uh, we get the special structure. We also get some new results for LED sulfur, Mr. One, Clefier, or Chameleon. Uh, the LED sulfur, uh, we get semi round integral distinguisher, which is the longest. For Mr. One, uh, although we can model the bit-based division property for six round, uh, but we do not get a better integral distinguisher. So the integral attack uh, on Mr. One cannot be improved uh, by our new model. Uh, to summary, uh, in this paper, we propose a new SMT-based model for bit-based division property of complex linear layers. We achieve some new records of bit-based division property for some important suffers. Uh, at last, I want to give some suggestions for choice of method. If your target is binary matrices, uh, you can use our new model or their method. If your target is non-binary matrices and uh, the size is not too large, you can use our new model because it is precise and efficient. And uh, uh, if your size is uh, too large, uh, as method will be the best, uh, actually the only, uh, the only choice uh, considering the efficiency. Thanks for your attention. Thanks, Kai. Um, next on we have a talk about multiple linear cross analysis using linear statistics uh, by Junggan Li and Wu Han Kim. And the talk is given by Junggan. Yes, but you're a bit quiet. Maybe you can turn up your mic a bit. Uh, so is audio level low or can you hear me? Yes, but the level is very low. Very low? Hmm? Maybe you can move a bit closer also. How about this? Can you hear me? That's OK. It's still a bit quiet, but it's OK. Yes, then I will start. Yeah. Hmm? Can I start now? Yeah, but please switch to presentation mode first. Uh, excuse me. Sorry. On the top left, the second icon, I think. If you can't find it, you can also uh, work like this. Now, can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, then I will start. Can I start now? Yep, please start. Yeah. yeah. Yes, the title of the talk is Multiple Linear Cryptanalysis Using Linear Statistics. 
I'm Jungkook Lee, and this is joint work with Wu Han Jin. In this work, we propose methods of linear characteristics that exploit multiple dominant and statistically independent linear trails. At Crypto 2004, Bill Cook and others presented multiple linear characteristics in the same setting, but they provide a theoretical estimates of advantage only for success probability one. We will describe our algorithm one and algorithm two style linear attacks in this setting. For each of the algorithm one and algorithm two style attacks, we have three versions. They are threshold based, rank based, and combined ones. For each attack, we provide the closed formula for success probability and advantage in terms of data size, correlation of trails, and threshold parameter. Each of the formulas are obtained by presuming certain hypotheses on the independence of wrong key and right key statistics as well as the statistical independence of the trails. We applied the methods to full this to see that our methods are comparable with existing ones and to check that our statistical models are valid. Massey is classical algorithm one exploiting a single trail tries to recover the parity bit associated with the trail. Massey is algorithm two exploiting a single trail at the outer round and tries to recover the parity bit and some outer round key bits. We will call the combination of those outer round key bits as the outer key. Because of time limit, we only consider algorithm two style attacks that are much more powerful than algorithm one style attacks in general. In algorithm two style attack, using a single trail, we can use the understandable correlation computed from each outer key candidates and given data as a statistic in a threshold based or rank based manner. To estimate the success probability and the advantage of an algorithm two style attack, we need a certain hypothesis regarding the outer out, no, right outer key and the wrong outer keys. The right key hypothesis usually presumed is that the parity adjusted under sample correlation for the right key can be regarded as a normal random variable with mean the correlation of the trail and there is one over n, where n is the size of data. The wrong key hypothesis is that the under sample correlation for the wrong keys can be regarded as a normal random variable with mean zero and there is one over n. For rank-based attack, we need additional hypothesis regarding the independence of the wrong key statistics and right key statistics as in some previous work. In this work, we propose to presume a stronger hypothesis that incorporates all the above hypotheses. We will presume generalized hypothesis for our multiple linear attack too. In algorithm two style attacks exploiting multiple linear trails, we introduce a new statistic T it is called a linear statistic because it is a linear combination of understandable correlation for the trails. More concretely, if we want to exploit n trails gamma j's, we'll let the statistic be the sum of minus one to beta j times the correlation of the trail gamma j times the understandable correlation for the j's trail computed from the given data with the guess kappa j. That is the part of auto key kappa involved in the computation of the understandable correlation for gamma j where each beta j is a binary indeterminate. So the linear statistic depends on the data b and binary values and beta one to beta n and the outer key kappa, that is the bit string combined from kappa j's. We use the statistic in threshold based, rank based or combined attack. In a threshold based attack, we pick out keys satisfying the threshold condition before trial encryption. In a rank-based attack, we rank the keys according to the value of the statistic. In a combined attack, we first pick out candidates satisfying the threshold condition and then rank the remaining keys. The combined attack yields better advantage than the threshold-based one for large success probability. To theoretically estimate the attack complexity of each attack, we need to know in advance the probability distribution of the statistic for the right key and wrong keys. It seems obvious that the probability distribution of the statistic are not the same for the wrong keys. We note that a wrong outer key can be the right key for some of the linear trails. Taking this into account, we consider wrong key types by the type of a wrong outer key kappa. We mean the set of linear trails gamma j's for which kappa j is right. We can similarly consider wrong key types for pairs of outer key and bit vector. Our main hypothesis is that for each wrong key type, 
the vector valued random variable representing the distribution of the vectors whose components are com component statistics for right outer key or wrong outer key has a multivariate normal distribution with a diagonal covariance matrix. Here, the diagon diagonality of the covariance matrix incorporates the statistical independence of right key statistics and wrong key statistics, as well as the, as well as the statistical independence of, of the trail. For an n vector mu and an n by n real matrix sigma, the n variate normal distribution with mean vector mu and covariance sigma is a distribution of the vector valued random variable with the PDF like this. A crucial fact that we use repeatedly in this work is that the probability that an n variate normal variable satisfies a linear inequality can be expressed in a simple formula like this. Then for the threshold based attack, the success probability is expressed as the probability that the vector value, the random variable corresponding to the right key satisfies a certain linear inequality so that it can be computed easily like this. The fourth alarm probability for threshold attack can be expressed as a sum over all the wrong key types. The proportion of the wrong key having the type multiplied with the probability that the wrong key of the type is a fourth alarm. The latter probability also can be expressed as the probability that the multivariate normal random variable satisfies, satisfies a linear inequality under our main hypothesis for its type. Then the fourth law probability and the, the advantage here are these values. Then the fourth law probability and the advantage are the success probability and fourth law probability for length based attack and the combined attack can be computed similarly. One thing to note is that for combined attack, the probability that the wrong key of a type is a false alarm is expressed as a probability that the multivariate normal random variable corresponding to the type satisfies two linear inequalities. It can be computed by simulation or numerically. We have applied the method to 16 round full deaths. We have used four trails for 14 round reduced deaths. and applied our algorithm to style a test pretending one round and attending one round to trail. We derived a theoretical estimate of success probabilities and fourth alarm probabilities varying the size of data, applying the threshold based and combined method. To verify whether the predicted complexities are correct, we have performed experiments on full deaths using 1,000 keys. For each key, we varied the data size up to as much as 2 to 42.78. The experimental results are depicted in circles here. The, the experimental success probabilities and false alarm probabilities for threshold based attacks and combined attacks have turned out to be very close to theoretically predicted ones. Recently, several notable linear attacks on deaths have been published. Our tests have comparable complexities compared with those ones. We think that current framework provides the most effective way of exploiting multiple dominant and statistically independent linear trails. The effectiveness of framework as seen from the case of deaths comes from several factors. First, the linear statistics we use is separable in depth. The statistic itself is computed as sum of component statistics, each of which depends on a small number of outer key bits. This makes the word in adding outer round, add outer round smaller compared to methods using non-separable statistics. Also, it is very close to the optimal LLR statistic of the constant under the assumption that the trails are statistically independent, as shown in this work. Secondly, the parity bits are recovered at the same time before trial encryption. This makes the advantage of the attack increase a bit compared to, for example, classical based attacks or mostly the LLR based attack based algorithm style attacks. Thirdly, the advantage of the combined method computed in the multivariate normal distribution is larger than the advantage obtained using other statistics. We also generalize the framework to exploit closer dominant linear trails that may not be statistically independent. In this generalization, we presume that each vector value random variable formula is similar as in the case of some. Uh, could you come to the conclusion? You're already running quite a bit over time. Ah, uh, yes, almost done. This is the last slide.
the generalized we presume that each set of variable random variable from a decentralized indicates of some statistic in them fails as a material normal distribution with a certain covariance matrix, then we could compute in advance. The attack procedures are similar and the success probability can advance if can made in similar way too. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Um, so that leads us to the final talk of the session on exploring secret keys in searching integral distinguishers based on the division property. And uh, the talk or the paper is by Wang Sangfeng, Hubin, Guanjie, Zhang Kai, and Shu Tai Rong. And the talk is given by Sangfeng. Yeah. Hey, can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Uh... Uh, can you see the screen? Mm -hmm. Screen works, but you still need to switch to presentation mode. Oh, okay. Many ways uh, uh, simple on the title of my talk is exploring secret keys in searching integral distinguishers based on division property. A division property was proposed by to do at Eurocraft 2015. It's a general realization of integral property it is powerful in finding integral characteristics for block ciphers. Then the beta-based division property was proposed by Tudu and Murray at FRC 2016. There are two kinds of beta-based uh, division property, conventional beta-based division property, denoted as CBDP, and uh, beta-based division property using three top sets, denoted as BDPT. At the Asia Craft uh, 2015, Xiang et al. Uh, applied MRP method to the proposition of CBDP. At Asia Craft 2019, Wang et al. proposed pruning techniques of BDPT and the integral distinguishers based on BDPT can be searched accurately. Uh, our motivation spike is a uh, a uh, family of lightweight block zippers for spike 32 because the block size is only 32 bitters. We can observe the behavior of all the planets and the uh, fixed keys by taxing 10 of 10 power of two random keys. We found uh, an integral distinguish of uh, six round spikes uh, 32. But this integral distinguish cannot be proved by a BDPT. There may be two reasons. The first one, this integral distinguish doesn't work for all the keys. The second, a BDPT cannot find a curated integral distinguish. So there exists a gap between the proved distinguish and the experiment one. How to improve the accuracy? of BDPT is an important issue for studying. Uh, then we studied the BDPT proposition rows of X with the secret keys and the new rows was pro proposed. It shows that some secret key bitters can be bypassed. Uh, based on the bypass technique, we pro proposed an improved automatic algorithm of searching I integral distinguish and apply it to some block ciphers, and some better integral distinguish are found. For spec 32, uh, the experiment uh, integral distinguish was, was uh, proved uh, that it works for uh, all case and for other block ciphers of spec, uh, more balanced bitters was found, and for Kanta a longer integral distinguish was found. For spike 32, same 32, same 32, and other uh, block ciphers, because the block size is only 32 bitters, uh, we can observe the behavior of all the planets and the fixed key. Then we experiment to prove that the integral distinguish from our uh, algorithm are the best integral distinguish that works for all the keys. That means our algorithm is very accurate in searching integral distinguishers. Uh, the feature work, as far as we know, there is still no results on the probable security against the integral uh, take. 
and this will be our future work. Uh, thanks for attention. Thanks a lot to you and all the speakers of the session. We can now switch over to the questions because I see there are already quite some of them on Zulip. Okay, maybe I will go first. Uh, yep, there are quite a lot of questions in the chat. So the first one is to Daniel. Uh, do you plan to publish the code? <laughs> Uh, I, I promised uh, Christina I would uh, do so. Uh, so I think uh, I'll do it some, so someday, but to do algorithmics in my, uh, in my code, uh, uh, pretty much everything is in the paper, but uh, yeah, of course I think, uh, I think I'll publish it. Uh, it's just a bit messy right now, so but, uh, yeah, I'll do it, I'll do it. That's great. So the second question from Alexei is, uh, so do you think it's possible to derive meaningful lower bound for the number of equations to model a Boolean function with MILP? Well, there is a, so there is the special case of uh, the linear Boolean function. Uh, so we have a lower bound for this, uh, but uh, we, we have not studied this, uh, this subject because, and I think it's not very useful for crypto anyway, because uh, we, we found that uh, reaching the exact minimum number of, uh, of inequalities is not what will allow the solvers to run as fast as possible. Uh, the solvers need a bit of redundancy. So uh, we want to, to be just above the minimum anyway. So, yeah. So actually, I have a question for you. I didn't work on this myself, but uh, I have a very naive question. Uh, MILP is working on a variable, which is an integer, usually 32 or 64 bits, right? But so we are using it to model the Boolean variables. Do you think there's a better way to do this, like remove the redundancy? The question is for me, right? Uh, so, oh. so there's a better way rather than MILP to, to model the problem in general, and in general, it's more efficient than MILP. Do you think there's such um, I, I think uh, there shouldn't be any uh, dogma on uh, which tools you use. I think uh, maybe some, uh, some designs are better in, uh, in MILP, some designs are better in constraint programming, but... Uh, I know. Uh, I don't know if there's a better way than MILP, but uh, it depends on the design, I think. Okay. The next question is for both Daniel and Chen Ning. So it seems MILP models are not useful for some ciphers, but useful for others. Do you have a stronger confidence in ciphers on which you can run MILP modeling or ciphers where you cannot? Uh, Daniel, do you want to go first? Or Jenny. Chen Ying, do you want to go first? Okay, um, let me answer this question. Uh, as I mentioned in the talk, our algorithm is facing an important, uh, an interesting observation, and it is applicable applicable to the ciphers whose uh, whose optimal characteristics have a low number of active exposures at a certain round. Uh, for the some ciphers applied our in applied in our talk, their uh, their permutation layers uh, their permutation layers are all bit permutation, and the optimal characteristics we found have zero or one or two active as boxes at a certain round. Uh, for the ciphers with stronger permutation layers like Noken and Serpent, uh, the optimal characteristics 
are likely to have a low number of active asphyxate in each round. For example, each round has greater than or equal to five or higher active asphyxate. For such ciphers, the main difficulty is that we can't find a proper way to uh, divide the whole search space. If we divide the whole search space by using the method proposed in this talk, the number of resulting uh, subsets will be too large. Thus, it costs a huge amount of time to search all the subsets divided. And that's all. Okay, uh, sorry, before before Daniel actually, I actually have a question for you. So you use the method to divide the problem into smaller ones, but uh, shouldn't the solver itself is capable to do this? Uh, I mean, do you, under which scenarios do you think uh, manual splitting the problem into smaller size will help the solver to, to solve the problem faster? Oh, is that is that the question for me? <laughs> that question for you. Oh, uh, I'm sorry, can you repeat the question? <laughs> In the talk, you mentioned that uh, you actually manually split the problem into smaller sizes. Uh, yes. To me, I think the solver itself should have such functionality. Like, my question is, under which circumstances do you think manually splitting the problem into smaller sizes uh, will help the solver to solve the problem faster? Mm, I'm afraid I didn't. I don't know the question. Uh, I have another question. If you use, if you split the, the model manually, is it really necessary to use uh, an MILP solver to do that? Can you not do that in, in C? Uh, we use the... Sorry, I didn't hear your question clearly. Uh, can you write the question in the chat? Ah, okay. So I, I can write it that in the chat. Maybe we can come back to that later. Uh, okay, okay, so thank you. Uh, so maybe Daniel, uh, what's your take on this question? Or did you hear my question? Daniel? Uh, he's offline, frozen. Uh, okay, we have many more for Daniel. So <laughs> let's come back to that later when he's back online. So the next question is for Sun Ling. So do you think your approach could be extended to handle bitwise differences especially for uh, impossible differential. So which CP solver did you use? Uh, Question from uh, okay. uh, Actually, we use our tool to uh, search the uh, related K impossible differential for skinny 64 and uh, 128. Uh, since the key schedule is, uh, contains some bitwise operations, so we have to handle bitwise difference. Uh, you just need to, if you want to do so, you just need to adjust the model a little bit. Um, but the efficiency drops a lot. So I think if you want to handle bitwise difference, maybe we should find other approach. Uh, 
Uh, and the CP solver we use, we mentioned in the paper, we use two CP solvers. Uh, one is called G-Code, uh, and uh, the other one is called OSICPC, and you can find it in the paper. Okay, that's all. Uh, maybe I have a, a one detailed question on that. So in your search for impossible differential, mm -hmm. do you already consider the bit level differences through a single S box? Right. Oh, no, we, did, we, we do not consider the bit wise contradiction. We only uh, find the impossible differential at the word level. Mm. Hmm. But that is uh, maybe that is a easy step to extend because you just need to consider one next box. Uh, yes. Uh, maybe we can try later. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So the next one is for Hukai. Could you, could your new technique be adapted to be used in MILP instead of uh, SMD? Uh, okay, actually, Alexei and uh, Bab T Baptiste has have answered this question. Uh, we can write the other patterns from the four degree constraints, and then use the convex hull to model uh, to uh, get a set of inequalities to constrain them. So I think the answer is yes. Okay, thank you. Thank you. So there's a question from Sui Ting Ting to Sen Peng. Can this method be applied to other ciphers? What do you think the limits of the new method? Yeah. Uh... Our new method uh, is that the key influence the when we research the secret key influence the proposition of BDPT and the inf the influence is very small. So when when we use our new uh, algorithm to a uh, block ciphers. Uh, the improvement is uh, very small, and uh, we only found uh, we only improved the runs of Canton. But uh, for other uh, block zippers, uh, we cannot improve. So, um, just because that the BDPT is uh, uh, very accurate, so uh, this uh, a new method. Uh, will improve uh, the BDPT uh, in a small level, and uh, that's all. Thank you. Uh, so is Daniel back? Yes, I am. Sorry, I ran out of a battery. So um, okay. I didn't check that my, uh, <laughs> sorry. There's quite a lot of questions for you, actually. <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, that had to happen, right? <laughs> OK, let me repeat. Uh, Yan's uh, last question is also for you. So Chen Ying asked, uh, answered her part. But uh, here's uh, the question. It seems the MILP model are not useful for some cipher, but useful for others. Do you have a stronger confidence in ciphers on which you can run MILP modeling? Or ciphers where you cannot. Um, so I um, I have confidence in uh, ciphers whose design allows to provide uh, security arguments. So whether this, for, for example, the AES has the white trace strategy, but and that's fine. I mean, you don't need MILP uh, for such things. I mean, when you have the white trace strategy to to give bounds, uh, it's okay. Uh, you can have confidence. But uh, the trend in uh, lightweight crypto is um, not to have this uh, equivalent of the white trade strategy. So I'd say that in such cases, uh, when you design a cipher, you should give a design that can easily be modeled 
in MILP or in constraint programming or SAT uh, for people to have tools to, to compute such uh, I mean, characteristics or give bounds and uh, this kind of things. Uh, and you should design the cipher in a way that uh, is good enough for providing security arguments and whether those security arguments, you can get them by computing with MIP or SAT or CP, or whether they are bounds that you can get theoretically, uh, I think it, those are equivalent things. But uh, you have to choose one of them. I guess the question in the end they want to know, so uh, basically, which kind of questions are easier for the MIP to solve? or is purely depends on experiences? I don't really understand what you mean. I mean, in the end, I think um, all, of, all of us are actually asking a core question, which is which kind of uh, problems are easier for milk to solve? Uh, I'd say first, uh, first thing is to have a simple linear areas. They are a real bottleneck uh, because of uh, what I showed you on, in the slides, you know, the fact that the number of inequalities needed uh, grows exponentially. Uh, and uh, I know, and I think the S boxes have kind of the same complexity. I mean, if you can have four bit S boxes, it would probably go faster than eight bit S boxes. For example, the middle S boxes, you know, you have these eight bit S boxes that use two four bit S boxes. Those are really simple to model and uh, it goes very fast. Uh, and uh, or, or the skinny S box, which has a very sparse DDT, uh, this goes very fast as well uh, in the modeling. But the, the real bottleneck is the linear layer. So having a simple linear layer makes things easier to, to model. Yeah, but, uh, but I don't know, uh, maybe in CP or SAT, uh, complex linear layers can be modeled very easily as well. So. Okay, thank you. So the next one and the one after that is also for you. Sorry. <laughs> so the next one is from Keton. So you mentioned that uh, the technique you explained for linear layer does not work well on MDS matrices, but you have impressive results on Satulin, uh, which uses a MDS matrix. So is there something else in Tooling that allows you to do, get the results? Yeah, uh, so I, I just checked and uh, Saturna, so it uses an MDS matrix. So it's a four by four matrix uh, on a four bit uh, nibbles. And uh, the thing that it's MDS over F2 to the four. Uh, and what, what I meant by MDS is a binary MDS. I mean, it has to be MDS over F2 for our techniques not to work. So uh, this is not the case of uh, Saturna, I think. Okay. Okay. Last one for you. <laughs> so did you uh, make or plan to comparison in solving time using your technique uh, versus previous ones? Did you compare the number of inequalities for other tables rather than DDT, such as uh, LAT or division property? So I have not tried with the LATs, but I don't expect them to, to be much, very different from uh, DDTs. And uh, I've tried, but uh, I mean, I have no results to publish on that, but uh, I've tried on uh, division property tables and uh, it works it works the same. I mean, uh, it gives good results and uh, not, 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 nothing to say. For the comparison between uh, state-of-the-art techniques and our techniques, we ran experiments on the uh, Skinny 128 and the AES uh, in terms of running times. Uh, and we, we, we looked at uh, what happened, isolating the, the improvement in the S-box modeling and the improvement in the linear layer modeling. So everything's in the paper. Uh, we have experiments. So did I miss your answer to the first part, uh, which is the solving time comparison? So the, the solving time, I mean, we, we got better solving times. Uh, it's not, um, 
I, I don't remember uh, exactly in which proportions, but uh, it's significant. Uh, we, we've got significant improvements in running times, and we've done experiments for Skinny and the AS only. Uh, OK, thank you. OK, I think that's, that's it from the chat. Uh, so uh, back to training. Uh, do, did you see my question explained in the chat here? Yeah, yeah, I have I saw the question. Uh, um, for, uh, for the, I think when the number of fronts of a cipher is too large, uh, the efficiency of the software is not good. Uh, so for in this case, we use our method is helpful. Mm, I don't quite follow that argument because to me, if you use a, a server, basically, so basically it's a brute force search, but in a better strategy and uh, in the worst case, you are actually brute forcing and every every case. Uh, so how this splitting into smaller sub problems helping this process? Sorry, I'm I don't quite understand your question now. Okay. okay, no problem then. Uh, so maybe I can post this to the Zulip chat so you can answer there. Okay, thank you. I'm sorry. Thank you. Uh, I think there's no more question for this session. So, Pogon Chess, uh, can we end here? I think we are already over time. Uh, we are over time. Yes, and the next session starts in a little less than 10 minutes, so. Ah, uh, okay, so then we should close the session now. If uh, there's not, no more message from the program coaches. <laughs>